rather different pace now from, from Brian's discipline. We're now going to move to an, an arts discipline, and it's my pleasure to welcome Professor Margaret Harris, who has been at Sydney a long time, including her period from 1996 to 2007 as a journalist uh, uh, within the Faculty of Arts and Social Science, and more recently as the Director of Research and Development. And amongst um, um, particular areas are uh, Victorian literature and one of the latest publications I think was around um, Patrick White's unpublished manuscript which was produced in, um, which came out last week. Welcome. Thank you. I said uh, in advance of this presentation that I was going to be the dinosaur. So uh, I did, um, in, in thinking about what I would say, permit myself uh, a little nostalgic retrospect. This building, the Fisher Library building, opened in my first postgraduate year, in round figures I have to say half a century ago. And it was a very different study environment from the old Fisher Library, McLaurin Hall now, just as the refurbishment now being completed provides a very different environment from those long ago days of the 1960s. Back then, uh, women, well I suppose everybody, but it actually applied only to women, women were asked to wear shoes with heels of a diameter greater than a shilling coin, a 10 cent piece, uh, so as not to damage the flooring material. Photocopiers were barely known, computers were room sized and, and uh, exclusive to the physicists. It took me probably a month on and off to get together a working bibliography for my uh, master's thesis on the Victorian novelist George Eliot using hard copy references and there was hardly anything on that list not physically available to me in, uh, in this library. The research culture was yet to be invented. People did something called my own work and occasionally publish something, but really uh, talking about it wasn't something that a gentleman really uh, needed to do, and conferences were few and far between. Well, having listened to Brian, uh, you don't need to uh, have me extrapolate at all on the changes inherent down this little memory lane. The volume of publication, the speed of its transmission, the variety of means of its dissemination are huge. But I'm not going to go into all of that, uh, except by implication. And as Anne suggested, my discipline, uh, it isn't only my generation, my discipline works at a slightly less uh, busy pace than astronomy does. And the burden of what I want to say is this. It's stick to basics. If you don't concentrate on the research, you'll have nothing with which to make your name. And uh, a, a particular reflection that uh, has occurred to me after the two presentations that we've so, so far had is um, that it's important not to confuse activity with esteem. Now, I should make clear here that, that my discipline, which is literary studies, and most humanities disciplines don't depend on citations, that uh, we don't have H factors, or if so, they're so negligible as to be um, completely irrelevant. The way that your name is made is uh, by uh, people discussing your work, by reviews, if uh, you've produced a monograph, uh, and, and by subsequent reference, citation, uh, in, in a, a more uh, qualitative sense, subsequent reference to your work and a discussion of it in, yes, journal articles because people in literary studies and most humanities disciplines do still read journal articles and uh, the refereed journal article along with the scholarly monograph are the principal currencies of uh, research output. So, um, uh, Concentrate on the research, have a realistic and, and living three-year research plan, which is of course now encouraged by the academic planning and development process. 
keep your short term and longer term goals in view and, and monitor progress. Take opportunities when they come, and I'll, I'll have a bit more to say about that, but um, keep, keep the eye on the goal of producing good research, however that's going to be uh, received and, and uh, regarded. I think uh, it's important to um, beware of spending more time networking virtually or otherwise than actually doing the research. And uh, while Brian's just given us what I found a truly exciting account of the way that research is happening via uh, social media and, and online tools, um, that doesn't yet apply to uh, a whole raft of, uh, of disciplines um, that are, are pursued and professed within this institution. So do good research, but be alive to serendipity because my experience is that it's often the chance encounter or some, uh, someone picking up your work in a way o over which you have had no control or, uh, or very little. And so my tips are as follows, and I said they're basic. Keep your home page up to date. This is your main window on the world, uh, and it's a window for the world to look in and find you. It's now the principal means that the university's media office and uh, faculty uh, media offices and publicity and outreach units, uh, the principal means that they use to get expert comment in response to inquiries from uh, press and, uh, and public. Uh, it was Deborah, I think, who referred to being asked to do a piece for the conversation. And uh, over and over again, uh, I'm hearing from colleagues more in the social sciences than uh, in the um, hum humanities, and to some extent also from colleagues in creative arts that uh, to be picked up by the conversation is to get your work out there before uh, a whole uh, range of people who might not otherwise see it. Uh, if they dip into it and, and make contact with you, uh, all kinds of things can happen. All kinds of things might not happen, but uh, it is uh, exposure of, of an order that um, the older methods of print and so forth uh, simply can't uh, can't provide you. Clearly you've got to be abreast of what's happening in your own field, even if this uh, doesn't have to proceed on an hourly basis. Uh, think of things beyond blogs and so on, like activities of professional associations, their newsletters, their particular uh, sites and uh, interactions. I'd continue to rank conference attendance and participation high among methods of getting you and your work known. Uh, I think you need to be selective about the conferences at which you, <coughs> uh, at which you present. I referred in, in my opening remarks to the fact that, that conferences, uh, when I was a, a, an early career academic, um, barely existed. They were annual standing conferences for the most part of learned associations and the kind of conference that now uh, is, is very frequent, almost epidemic in humanities and social science disciplines of a themed conference around a particular uh, topic or, or on a particular theme uh, is a much later uh, eventuality, which in our case uh, related to relatively cheap air travel between Australia uh, and uh, the rest of the world. Now, uh, no more nostalgia, uh, but in urging you to select your conferences with care, you need clearly to think strategically about what's going to be most useful uh, for you to present at, but also not to spend your time junketing around um, and failing to get things written, which um, in the case of the sorts of disciplines from which I come, is a process of, of longer maturation than can seriously be accomplished between 3 a.m. Uh, and, and midnight on whatever clock. So get there, be in evidence, ask a question. Use the coffee breaks. 
or the pub for the kinds of informal exchange that can be powerful. Offer a panel. Look for opportunities for collaboration and for uh, making that collaboration known and its effects known. But I'd also want to um, stress that there are opportunities closer to home. And one of the pleasures uh, of my current role, um, and it's a pleasure that's also disconcerting, is that uh, I'm able often to put people within this institution in touch with someone else who's working on something similar or analogous and these uh, researchers have been entirely unaware of uh, the other's activity. Uh, a, a case in point was uh, two researchers from different disciplines, both doing work in Sierra Leone, uh, which as a, a field work site um, is not common for reasons clearly to do with the political uh, situation uh, in, that, uh, in that country. No formal collaboration resulted from it, but uh, they did get, at the very least, I think, mutual reinforcement from uh, encountering each other. So, be active about giving papers in your own department and school, also where possible in other units. Uh, seek or make opportunities to present outside academia. Um, this uh, can at times appear trivial, but uh, remember that your work uh, is supported by the brand, University of Sydney, so uh, you're, you're contributing something by speaking to your local PNC, um, the Rotary Club, whichever group um, invites you uh, to present. And you can't ever tell, and this in my experience particularly in relation to potential partners for linkage applications within the ARC scheme. You can't ever tell when you might um, encounter someone or, or be given a lead to a potential uh, industry partner through that sort of um, personal appearance and uh, outreach activity. I've referred to the conversation. Uh, another initiative uh, that is currently being activated uh, in the uh, university but is of uh, a less universal reach uh, is a uh, relationship with the Australian Book Review and its editor Peter Rose who is going to spend uh, a week at a time, a couple of times a year uh, in the university. He'll be doing, uh, it's next week, the first one, He's doing uh, master classes with postgraduate students and meeting with uh, staff uh, and uh, postgrads uh, to um, discuss their work and to discuss possibilities of being published in the um, in, uh, Australian Book Review. Uh, so he, he has an ambition to have more longer uh, thought pieces uh, than uh, the, the customary 900 word review uh, and uh, because the arts editor of the conversation, Katrina Menzies Pike, is A, a PhD from the English department, B, uh, a fellow of the University of Senate and C, keen to uh, have a relationship with uh, Australian Book Review that might lead to cross traffic between them because the conversation excerpts pieces. Um, so I, I happen to be giving a plug for this because it's something currently uh, on my plate, but I think it's, it's only, uh, or it, it serves as an example of the kind of possibility that uh, mushrooms around this place and to which uh, you should seek to uh, tap in uh, where you can. The research portfolio, just another quick instance, um, last week uh, offered the first of what's to be a series called uh, Research Bites which was uh, very um, stimulating, but alas, poorly attended, lunchtime session in the Charles Perkins Centre, where researchers from a range of disciplines gave um, a, a three minute, as I recall, uh, or maybe it was three slides and five minutes. Anyway, something pretty brief uh, on their uh, research, and there were half a dozen presentations 
uh, which led to conversation among the, the people presenting and of course uh, with the audience. Um, if people don't know what you're doing, if they don't know what you're doing in a manner that's intelligible and accessible to them, then you really have got work to do. And my message is that there are opportunities to be, to be found um, internally as well as externally and uh, vir virtually. Just one more specific tip, and that's, this is for the disciplines where learned journals are, are still um, to be read. Editors of journals are often appreciative of offers to review. Uh, that um, to write to the editor of a journal uh, specifically in your field and say, hello, you don't know me, but I'm so and so, and I would be particularly interested in reviewing books within this spectrum, can often be a, a gift to an editor or, or a book review editor. And um, it's a way of you getting a stake in um, that kind of, of critical debate uh, that can lead to other things. You've demonstrated interest. You may find that you're, you're picked up as a reviewer uh, by other places, but just one um, possible practical thing to do. And uh, finally, make sure that you continue to enjoy what you're doing. I still am working on George Eliot. <laughs>